command line interface is the most basic way of interacting with the database. To access it, we can either use the Windows Terminal, as we did in the previous video, or we can use the shell provided with XAMPP. Let's first connect as the root superuser. We first need to make sure that the MySQL service is running. This user has access to every database now in the system. It can also create or delete databases and users. We use the create database SQL command to create a new database, which we will call info H400. We can add a new user with the create user command. A user account is defined by a username and a host. The host determines where the user can connect from. Localhost users can only connect to the database from the computer hosting the database itself, which is always the most secure option. Distributed systems, however, will often require other hosts to be specified. A password can also be added. If we log in as this new user, we will not be able to see the new database. In fact, the only database it can see is Information Schema, which is a special database dynamically generated when a user connects and containing some information about the tables and databases that the user can access. As a super user again, we can use the grant all privileges command to give the new user access to the new database. We could also be more selective and only grant some privileges, for instance, to give a view only access. Flush privileges command makes sure that the change we made are saved. We can now log in again as the new user and finally see the Info H400 database. A side note on vocabulary. The term database is often used both for the database management system, in this case the MariaDB service and all the data files, and for a specific database within that system. We also talk about a schema for a specific database, which may sometimes be less confusing. Now that we have access to the Info H400 database, we can explore some commonly used commands. To create a table, we need to provide first the name of that table, then a list of all the columns, with for each column a name, a type, and some additional options. For instance, not null means that we will always require a value for that column if we try to insert data in the table. Auto-increment is generally used for the ID column. It means that the DBMS will automatically handle the value of the column by incrementing a counter each time a new row is inserted. We also need to provide a primary key, which will be the main index for identifying a row. Two rows can never have the same value for their primary key. We can use the describe command to check what the table looks like. The insert command is used to add new data. we need to give a list of colons and then corresponding values. We can add multiple rows at the same time. The command will only be executed when we get to the semicolon.
There are some built-in functions in SQL which are sometimes useful, such as the now function, which gives the current date time. With the select command, we can show all the data contained in the table. As we can see, the ID was automatically added. The star is a white card, meaning all columns. We could also choose to only select some specific columns that we are interested in. If you want to select some particular rows, we can add a WHERE clause to the SELECT statement. The WHERE clause adds one or many conditions, and the SELECT command will only retrieve the rows for which these conditions evaluate as TRUE. Two other main commands are update, to change the content of one or many rows in the table, and delete, to remove rows. Both commands use the WHERE clause to determine which rows will be affected. Obviously, using this command line interface to manage the database system is not very practical. Typically, the data input and output with the select, update, delete and insert statements will be handled by the information system program. The creation of the table, database and user access will often be done using a database management application, which includes graphical interface which make the life of an information system developer a lot easier. But that will be for next time.